Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Marseille, the property pastor here with Kingdom Legacy Builders, where our mission is to help everyday people like you and me to build a lasting legacy for our children and our children's children using real estate and wealth building principles. Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel today. In today's video, I want to talk about how to keep common areas clean in your rooming houses. As you know, a rooming house is basically broken down where people, where tenants will rent out individual rooms, but they will share areas like the kitchen, they will share the bathroom, living room areas, and certain areas throughout the house. They'll have their own individual room, but they're going to share those combined spaces. So I have gotten this question before from some of our different viewers about how do you actually keep the areas clean? You know, some folks have asked, should I hire a cleaning company? Uh, should I go into the property periodically and clean it myself? Or should I just leave this up to the tenants? And I want to give you my recommendations for it. I'm going to show you how I operate in my business with my rooming houses. But before we do that, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button. You know, as we're sharing content throughout the videos, we're sharing uh, tips and, and strategies for, for building your business. Make sure you hit that like button because by doing so, more and more people get to see this video and we're able to be a, be a blessing to more and more folks. Now, keeping these areas clean in a rooming house can be stressful. Either hiring a, a cleaning company or cleaning yourself can, can be both stressful and it can get very expensive. You know, and I like to personally leave that responsibility up to the tenants to clean those areas. Unless you're charging the tenants specifically for cleaning these areas, you don't want to bear that expense alone. I also have an Airbnb. Every time I hire a, the, the cleaning company to come in and do what we call a turn, that's an added expense. It can be upwards of $150 to $200 depending on the size and the square footage. So if every time, if you have someone come in and clean that property every single week, or even if it's just once a month, that can add up quick. And then on top of it, if you're the person going out and cleaning the property yourself, the tenants are going to take total advantage of it. They're not going to. So it's very important. And I recommend that you don't bear that expense and you don't take on that responsibility. And I want to show you how to build those systems in so that you don't have to worry about that headache. Now, I know you're probably asking yourself, what if the tenants leave the place a mess? The truth is one bad tenant can ruin the property for everyone else. If you have one person who's always leaving dishes in the sink, who never cleans the refrigerator out, who's terrible in the bathroom, they leave their clothes, they leave a huge mess. That can really be stressful to the other tenants. If you give into the complaints, then you as a landlord may be hiring a company. You may be going out and actually cleaning this on your free time. And it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having that property. That property should be working for you and not the other way around. So the very first thing I want you to do is to start with your lease. And then on top of your lease, you need to make sure you have house rules. In those, you need to clearly state that the cleaning the common areas is the responsibility of the tenant. And if the common areas are not kept clean, then you will go in and get them clean and back charge the tenants. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what if, what if it's just one tenant and everyone else is keeping their area clean? You know, through the course of talking with people, through the course of documentation, you will be able to, to whittle that down. And what I have found in my experience is that people tend to police themselves. If you set clear expectations and then if you inspect what you expect, you will get much different results. Sometimes we have a habit of setting rules up front and just expecting people to, to comply to those rules. The fact of the matter is once you write in your lease whose responsibility it is and then you start to do inspections as the landlord to go and make sure that the property is conforming uh, to those requirements, then people will, will ultimately start to follow those, those things. Now, you will have difficult people. There's, there's no doubt about it. There are just some people who don't like to follow rules. Some people are going to do what they want to do. But the thing that you must do is you look back at your lease, you look at your house rules, and when you begin to see violations, you document those violations in writing. That's key, right? So you've got to first put it in your lease, put it in your house rules, then you've got to do inspections at some periodic frequency. And any time that those uh, requirements are not being met, those rules are not being met, you've got to document those infractions in writing. And then after you document in writing, if people still don't conform to it, you've got to escalate it to a further action. That may mean that you go and actually hire someone to come clean the property and then you charge that towards the tenant or you take it out of their security deposit. But ultimately, you may even have to evict that tenant. I've never had to evict a tenant because they keep they couldn't keep the house clean. But we have had to have meetings with our tenants and sit down uh, and go through the rules and regulations and make sure they understand them and tell them if they don't comply, then we will a either back charge them to have it cleaned or b we will all, we will also pursue eviction if necessary. And I've never had a tenant to not comply. But I I highly uh, recommend against you taking on the extra burden 
of going and just up front saying, I'm going to clean the, have somebody come in and clean the property every other week, uh, or, or I'm going to go in and clean it myself because tenants are going to totally take advantage of you. There are all different types of people in the world. You can't think that everyone's going to take care of your property the same way that you would, but you've got to put that responsibility back towards the tenants. Now, the only exception that I would take, the only time that I, that I would say this doesn't apply will be in an instance if you are renting out individual rooms to a platform like Airbnb. So if you're renting individual rooms out, then it's a whole different standard through Airbnb. Why? Because Airbnb is hospitality. So when you're renting that room out, you want to make sure that the room and the common areas are in tip top shape. So that's the one exception. If I was doing individual rooms to a platform like Airbnb, every time a new person checks in, I've got to make sure those areas are clean, right? Because if I don't, then that tenant or that that uh, guest is going to give me bad reviews. Now those tight and, and on top of it, that guest is expecting somewhat like a hotel stay, right? So in platforms like Airbnb, you're able to charge a cleaning fee, so you can clearly state that up front. So that tenant that that guest knows whenever they book your property, there is a cleaning fee attached to it. So that is the one exception that I don't actually that I would actually recommend where you actually hire someone or you take care of the cleaning yourself because in those situations you're basically running a hotel but if you're doing a traditional rooming house where you know you've got people signing up for, for year-long leases i would definitely recommend against doing the cleaning yourself or hiring a company leave that responsibility to the tenants you don't want that headache and you don't want that expense trust me if you train the tenants properly they will follow the rules and you can sleep a whole lot better at night and have a lot more money in your pocket hey i hope this has been a blessing to you i hope it's been a benefit to you my custom is always to pray at the end of the video so i want to do that for you real quick just pray god's blessing over you pray that god will guide you if you're looking for property number one or working on property number 10 that his hand will be upon you so let's pray together real quick father thank you so much for allowing us to be together. Thank you for this video. Thank you for everyone who's watching. Thank you, God, for those who have subscribed. Thank you, Father God, for the information. And I pray that it helps whoever hears it, God. I pray, Father God, uh, that you would just strengthen our faith. Help us, Lord God, to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, I pray for those, Lord God, that are building businesses, whether they are thriving or whether they are struggling. I pray they are encouraged. Uh, and I pray that you will bless us to be a blessing. Father, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. I really appreciate your support. Again, if you haven't liked the video, make sure you like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, take a few seconds and hit that subscribe button. We're dropping great content to help you along your journey. I want to be a blessing to you. If you got questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section and I'll get them answered. God bless you. Thanks so much for tuning into the video and I'll see you again soon.